stay with the story of how different businesses are navigating through COVID-19. This week, if you've been watching, you heard us use the example of Linamar, the auto parts giant in this country, which had no way to uh, avoid uh, pandemic-related pain. We saw that play out with their sales during the period, but they also focused on some pretty significant boosts to their overall liquidity. Let's uh, check in with the CEO, Linda hassan Fratz, joining us on the phone line now. Um, Linda, just give us a sense on, you've, you've checked in with us a few times over the last uh, few months. Just give us a sense on where your business sits today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are very much focused on recovery at this point. I feel like we've really come through the toughest point. I mean, uh, you know, the month of April was obviously a pretty tough month. Almost every plant uh, globally shut down with uh, the exception of China. Uh, we are now climbing back out of that, which is fantastic. So we've got some uh, plants running here in North America, we have plants that started back in Europe last week, sort of lightly starting to ramp back up. And next week, most uh, the, the rest of the North America plants will be coming back online. So, you know, we're slowly coming back out. Uh, we've spent a lot of time trying to make sure we've, we have the right safety protocols in place so that our, our people can come back to work safely. And we're looking forward to doing that. And maybe shed some, since you are a global business and you, you've had that experience already in Europe and you're really gearing up here in North America as well, um, is, it, is it the same experience in, in reopening? Take us through what you've, you've been learning through all this. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I'd, I'll talk about the safety of our people because obviously that is top of sure. mind. And uh, what, what we've done is established a really solid safety protocol for bringing our folks back to work. It's based on five key principles of screening people before they come in and make sure that they're not sick, that they're not high risk based on the interactions they've had, making sure they're equipped with the right personal protective equipment, including masks, uh, distancing. We've put in separation barriers uh, within uh, the facilities, whether it's in the lunchroom or, or the washrooms or the, the offices to keep people apart. Uh, we have protocols around, you know, meetings and, and lunchtime and that kind of thing to make sure people are staying apart, cleaning and hygiene, and then uh, tracing so we know where folks have been. So in the, in the instance that something did come up, uh, we would know exactly who uh, may have been um, exposed. And, you know, we've been running for 13 weeks in China and we haven't had one single case of positive COVID-19 diagnosed. So the protocols mm. work. You know, we've tried to take best in practice ideas from right around the world, and we feel very confident in the safety of our people coming back. Looking at what that restart looks like, I think it's going to be a little different um, country to country. So because the, act the consumer re uh, reaction has been quite different country to country, so... You know, China, the first month dropped like 81% in terms of uh, retail sales, like vehicle sales out in the market. The second month of lockdown, it was 42% down. And then the third month uh, after lockdown started, they were up 2.6%. So at this point in China, we're basically back up to 100% of where we would expect to be. In Europe, the first month of lockdown was 52% down. Next month was 80% down, uh, and now we're waiting to see because we've only been two months uh, in where that goes. Whereas in the U.S., actually, first month was only 38% down, and second month, 47% down. So uh, a much a shallower dip. I mean, obviously, <laughs> almost 50% down is still a big number, uh, but uh, a much right. less we hit in North America than in Europe. So my estimation is... North America is going to come back a little more quickly than Europe. Let's just talk a little bit more about um, as you watch for the story on the recovery, how you're dealing with costs. Um, and, we, and we talked a lot this week about the dividend cut, which is obviously one way you manage costs. Uh, just give us a sense on your thinking about you know, how you uh, manage money while you're waiting for things to get back to some kind of normal. Yeah, so uh, clearly focus on cost reduction and cash conservation have been absolutely top of mind for us. Uh, we have uh, looked at 
cost uh, reduction from a whole variety of perspectives. I mean, obviously there was some workforce adjustments, but also just a lot of cutting back or deferring spending on basically anything that wasn't mission critical. Uh, you know, looking out th- out through the, the rest of the year, also you know, scaling back on all of our plans. Any any plant in person uh, interactions are now going uh, virtual to uh, to save on any of those kind of costs. We've also put a global cost team in place to come up with other cost saving uh, ideas. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, they've already implemented something like $12 million of, of uh, savings in only a few weeks, which is great to see. And then on the cash conservation side, obviously that area is absolutely key as well to maintain strong levels of liquidity to, to get through the next couple of months, right, when we have uh, no receivables uh, flowing in. Uh, so that was a big focus first quarter. It's still a big focus. Uh, trying to reduce our capital expenditures wherever we can, which we were very successful at. We cut CapEx 25% in the first quarter. We're looking to be down probably about a third from last year. This year, as we reallocate capital, our flexible equipment lets us do that. And then, yes, you know, we cut the uh, dividend in half. I mean, it's a it's a small number. It doesn't move the dial very much, obviously, in terms of liquidity or or uh, or any of that. But I have to say, we just uh, we have thousands of people who've been on layoff. Uh, it didn't feel right that we pay a full dividend to our shareholders when we had thousands of people uh, who were laid off and and feeling the impact of this. So I felt like you know we're all in it together. We're all going to take a bit of a hit here, and uh, and we'll get uh, that restored just as soon as we can. Uh, that's helpful context, Linda. And we only have about a minute left, but I did want to get to something else that you guys have been up to th- uh, through through the pandemic, which was uh, ventilators, uh, which obviously was something as you were you know not able to be involved with regular car production, you were focusing on that because there was obviously uh, a need for that. Uh, You talked about it on the conference call this week. Just just give us a sense on whether that's something you're going to continue with uh, as you get back to some kind of normal with the rest of your business. Yeah, I mean, most of these ventilator contracts are are short-term, right? So they're they're finite in terms of the volumes that uh, are required. So like O2 Medical, for instance, we're making uh, 43 different components uh, for for them uh, for 10,000 units, and then that job uh, is complete. Thornhill Medical, uh, we're making 1,200 fully assembled uh, units for them. This is much more than a ventilator; it's more like an ICU in a box. Uh, so uh, that uh, that is a much more complex um, product. Uh, which we have, you know, fully tooled up when we're ready to roll uh, in uh, at our iHub here in Guelph. So uh, looking to get into production in another uh, week or so uh, on those products. So will they continue? I mean, obviously, if there's need for us to continue to help out, uh, we will absolutely do so. Uh, you know, more broadly, medical devices is an industry that we had already started expanding into with a recent uh, agreement we put together with Synaptive Medical uh, to in Toronto to make uh, their unique MRI machines and, and digital microscopes for surgical applications. So, you know, we like the industry. We feel like we've learned a lot in the last couple of months, made a lot of great connections, and can further develop our strategy to expand in this market. Linda, thanks a lot. Always good to get an update from you. That's helpful context. Linda Hassan for the CEO of Linamar, joining us with how that business is navigating through COVID-19.